Hi, hello, and welcome to another expert inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am delighted to be joined by Michelle Beauchamp, who is up in Orange County, California. How are you doing, Michelle? Yes, I'm happy to be here, John. Yeah, and I say up. Uh, because I'm a little bit further south uh, in North County, San Diego. So, um, uh, so we're quite close together today. And, uh, and Michelle is a, a, certified, uh, a certified trainer with the John Maxwell Team Leadership Game. So um, before we start and get into talking about leadership, Michelle, just tell us a little bit more about the John Maxwell approach and why you decided to you know, get involved with this. Okay. I love talking about John Maxwell and, and all that I've gained from it. I've actually been following John Maxwell for, I'm going to say, 15 years or more. I love his philosophy. Um, his, I, I, he is all about values, building value for people, and he's all about servanthood leadership. Um, so I actually just really love his philosophies and followed him. I think the first book I read by him was called Thinking for a Change. And, you know, what I gleaned from that and still carry with me today is we really are what we think about. So we have to really watch our thoughts because what is it? Our, word, our thoughts can become our words, which can become our actions and so forth and so on. So I really like that. So because I like his philosophy, I followed him for a long time. I've been in sales and I've been in leadership for many years, more years than I want to say. And I, um, you know, decided that I wanted to get a certification. I thought, you know what, I, I worked full time for um, a company, the Spectrum, which used to be Time Warner. I did that for 10 years. Um, and I used to have another sales training company and I knew all along that what I really had a passion for was training and, and coaching. So I thought, you know what, I need to get certified. That would just give me more credibility and, 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 and help me, help me grow and mentor me. So I found out that John Maxwell had a program. And when I looked into it, I thought, well, that's it because I believe, you know, I, I like him, I trust him, I believe in his, his knowledge and his wisdom and have, have gained a lot from it. So that, that just made a lot of sense. And as I share with you, just so happens that tomorrow mm -hmm. I'm on my way to Orlando to go to the, the, the conference. So I'm excited about that. So I've been following him for a long time and love his content. Excellent. And, and you mentioned one thing just interesting there about uh, your thoughts uh, and, you know, be careful what you think. And it's one of the things I've been talking to people a lot about recently is being very careful of the influences that you allow into your brain on a daily basis, because that's obviously can impact how you lead, how you operate. It's like if you start off your morning on social media, you may see things there that just may tick you off because you, as you know, we may, people love to present the greatest version of their lives, right? On social media, right. so you might wake up in the morning and go, oh my goodness, their life is so much better than mine. And now right. you're in it. Now you're not in a good headspace, right? So I think, I, I, can you talk a little bit more about that when you are, working with people on leadership, how you, um, you know, how you help them to be careful of the inputs that affect the output. Mm -hmm. I get, you know, I just, I learned a long time ago that the value of that and uh, the power of our thoughts and our words and, and, and how we say things, just even the language that we speak. For example, in the team that I would lead, sometime a person would say, oh, you know, I'm such an idiot. I'm such a loser. And I would say, you know what, take those words back because mm -hmm. that's not true. We're not trying to bring that to fruition. We have to believe what we really are. I mean, we might have made a mistake and we might not have gotten what we wanted, but it doesn't represent who we are. It just means that it's an opportunity for us to learn and grow. And in people who I lead and work with, I'm big on vision boards. I've been doing vision boards for a long time and I lead a mastermind group. And actually we did it at the beginning of this year, we, we created, you know, I said, okay, you guys, how do you feel about this? We're gonna create vision boards. How do you feel about that? And they were like, oh, that's awesome because I've been meaning to do it mm -hmm. and I never seem to get around to it. So now I'll have to do it because it's what we're gonna do. And you know, it, some people had done them before and others had not because they intended to. So, you know, the word the advice that I gave them was, look through magazines and papers and go online and look for words that resonate with you and mm -hmm. pictures that resonate with you. And it is interesting that over time you do see how when you put it in front of you, 
it really, it really can come to life. And I'm not into, I'm not talking about the material things like I want a car, but but more who we want to become, you know, Um, like I I had on mine a couple years ago, uh, speakers speak up because I wanted to do more speaking. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, I got a chance to start speaking to people more. And I did um, a talk, which actually they're down in San Diego. They started, it's called Sue Talk, which stands for successful, unstoppable, and empowered. And they do a talk, kind of like a TED talk. So then, you know, I, I did a Sue talk that year. So we really, if we visualize the right way and we think about the right things and then we verbalize the things that make us feel good, because by the way, when we feel good, we help other people feel good. <laughs> yeah. Then, then it becomes reality. Yeah, and let me pick up on a couple of things you said there um, that I was uh, just noting here. Um, so the first one is is the vision board, and I and I like that concept a lot. You know, when because um, we should we should um, visualize our goals, whether we write them down and have them in front of us, or a vision board or whatever. Because mm-hmm. let's face it, um, as leaders or even team members, if you don't know where you're going, is the same mm. goes any road will take you there, right? So you have right. to have that end in mind. You know what? Absolutely. Well, Stephen Covey said, begin with the end in mind. And you know, one thing that John Maxwell says that I love too, is that a leader sees more and before. So, you know, the leader's job is to not just look at right in front, right in front of them. And by the way, they might not like what they see that's right in front of them. <laughs> but when they visualize, which is what a vision board helps you do too, and they see further, then they can lead the team on and help them see more and before. So, so that's an example of, so many nuggets that I get and then implement and train people on. And the other thing I was going to pick up on, because it's interesting as well, as, a, as, a, as having a conversation recently about um, what holds people back from, from succeeding. And, you know, we always say, well, fear of failure, you know, people are afraid. Mm-hmm. But fear of success actually sometimes plays an even bigger role. And, mm-hmm. and I find that's a very interesting psychological uh, yeah. phenomenon, that fear of success. Do you ever come across that when you're helping teams like it's, they want to do, but then they start to think, or your leaders start to think, but if I do all of this, then it means all of these changes to my circumstances. Yeah. And a lot of times it means more work. Yeah. <laughs> and I do find that, you know, and I've had to work on that with myself too, mm-hmm. that it's, it's, um, it, it, we can't just stay in our comfort zone. I think for me, that's the end of it. You know, we can't, at the end of the day, we can't just stay in our comfort zone because we might get success and then we might get comfortable with it. And, but then we limit the other success that we, that we could get. So I think if we just, you know, for me, I'll tell you, um, I definitely have Christian beliefs. And there's a book that I read many years ago called The Prayer of Jabez. And one of the chapters, uh, he went into a room and there were a lot of white boxes wrapped in red ribbon. And those boxes represented all the opportunities that were there for him but he never opened them up. And so that really, I, you know, I still carry that with me today and just think I've got, which is why I wanted to talk to you and see what this was all about. You know, I, I don't want to leave any gifts unopened. I want to be able to pursue because I believe that, you know, God has much more in store for me than I can even imagine. And it's my job to unwrap those gifts and see if they're for me or not. And I think uh, there's and there's a, just to build on that. There's an interesting uh, phenomenon there as well. Is that uh, you know people don't like making choices, right? So they don't. Maybe you present them with all these boxes, and if I open one box, you know, I'm making a choice to open that box. Uh, and people don't always realize that when you don't make choices, that is a choice to not make choices to stay mm-hmm. where you are. You are you are choosing to stay where you are. You're not. You're not, uh, nobody's keeping you there. You're choosing to be there. Right. You, you know, that's so true. We make choices and we have to live with them. And, you know, to go back to John Maxwell again, the choice you make makes you. I mean, how true is that? We can decide to exercise or not. Mm-hmm. And if we decide to exercise, then we're going to get the benefit. And we all know what the benefits are. And if we decide not to, and then we have some health problems, well, we made that choice. Yeah, uh, and it's hard because you know we can't blame anybody else. <laughs> yeah, those are choices that we make or choose not to make. They're they're going to be what carries us on through life. So I I totally yeah it's 
And so it's hard to sometimes make the choices. Again, we sometimes want to just stay in our comfortable comfort zone. It feels good. We like sitting on the couch watching the show or whatever. Um, <laughs> at some point in time, though, there's going to be an a consequence that that's going to happen and we're and we're never going to be able to blame anybody because we have the choice yeah and i think that's the other thing is like uh everything comes with everything comes with compromises and everything comes with consequences right so right. um there's a consequence to doing nothing there's a consequence to doing something uh, and mm -hmm. you have to accept it it's an interesting one as well is um when you're when you're uh, teaching uh, uh, leaders and working with leaders and teams um communication is an interesting one because you know everybody else brings up the communication issue and now we have multi-generational teams and people communicate differently and let's face it we live in a world where we're not exactly um, good communication has not exactly been modeled for us in in popular culture and the news and everything today so how do you work with helping people communicate in a in a more positive way but also be able to understand that not everybody communicates the same way mm -hmm. you know and the interesting communication is such a huge issue you well, know no, a popular topic for me lately has been listening in fact last night uh actually two nights ago i did a talk with the toastmasters group and it's called listen to connect and it, the more that i teach listening the more people become aware how challenging it is to listen mm -hmm. <laughs> because we're so busy and so it's hard to give attention and really pay attention to what the person is saying so for me it starts with recognizing that listening is what's going to create the connection and that when we really have a good dialogue with someone, what we're really working on is building relationships. And, you know, no matter what you do, I mean, I teach sales a lot too. And sometimes salespeople are really known for being guilty of talking too much. Mm -hmm. And so listening builds relationships and it creates trust. When people understand that we're giving them our time, and that's a valuable resource, mm -hmm. isn't it? Oh, yeah. when we give our time when we actually look at somebody in the eye we stop looking at the phone we stop looking at the computer if somebody comes in and we and we look up and we make eye contact with them then it makes them feel important mm -hmm. and so it can, for what i like to convey to people is communication means that you're making me feel important. I'm making you feel important. We value each other, we're, we're important and we deserve the respect. And I really do hope that, you know, we, we, we stop so much texting and, mm -hmm. and, and kind of go back to having a conversation because then you can hear the tonality. There is tonality in emails and there is tonality in text, sure. but, sure, but, but you know. You know, you're correct, but there's an awful lot of time wasted going, uh, how should I interpret that? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's, an inter it's another interesting point that, that you raise there about the, the listening part because there is nothing, there is nothing that uh, makes somebody feel more valued uh, is that when you say something to me and instead of me just going on with my next thought or whatever, that mm -hmm. I actually repeat back to you and say okay so what you're saying is and and i validate it that's the i mean and that's what for salespeople, i mean that's incredibly um helpful but to be honest in all relationships in life you know whatever it's if you repeat back and validate what the person just said to you that's it that that communicates to the other person that you actually took time out to listen and you weren't just formulating what you were going to say next you know what, absolutely. And in that Toastmasters talk the other day, I had them do a quick exercise. I only had 30 minutes at that, mm -hmm. so I had to be efficient and succinct. But I gave them a little bit of time to actually practice that active listening and paraphrasing. And, and the takeaway was for them to realize how much of a difference it made by paraphrasing to make sure they got it right and you know i told them many times i'll paraphrase and the person will say no that's not what i meant at all <laughs> and you know so that's a good awareness that okay good i'm glad i asked and clarified them so we could be on the same page and you know where that uh, where that is the if anybody wants to look up they should look up um uh, uh 
couples therapists or group therapists or whatever and look at and look at you can find some videos on youtube but you will see that that is that the essence of that is where you know if maybe it's a couple and the one partner says something and the other partner then has to repeat and validate it back mm -hmm. and sometimes you'll see it takes three or four times before the original person goes Yes, now you get what I'm talking about. And to your point, I think about the toast, it, it is incredible how, how difficult that is because we've gotten away from that because we're so used to reacting. Yes, you're, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you see as, uh, as some of the uh, biggest challenges going forward with, build, with, with, with leadership and building high-functioning teams? What do you see some of the challenges that maybe weren't there a few years ago? Or are they just the same as they've always been? Uh, I think that the challenges, are, they're very different now. Um, you know, it's funny. I mean, I don't want to date myself, but <laughs> when I started working, my, my, my sons are always really like, really? I mean, we didn't have email. I mean, that's hard to imagine. Yeah, we didn't even have fax machines. I'm really dating myself now. But <laughs> No, no, no. My, I'm, I'm, my, my son does the same to me. He, he goes yeah. on and he always goes, uh, he goes, uh, Dad, it's like the 21st century, please. <laughs> yeah, when I tell him about something and I had, you know, and I say, and I talk about pre-internet and everything, and he's like, I mean, he <laughs> talk about not active listening. He's just looking at going, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like you guys are like, you guys are ancient, ancient right? Yeah, I yeah. know. So, so the leadership challenges, I think, are very, are very different. And I think that there's so much of a need for people to hurry up now. Um, I think that we don't try and take the time in, in companies. I see this. Mm -hmm. We don't take the time to collaborate. We don't take the time to say, hey, I'm, you know, have a meeting, but, but not have the meeting be so much of an update about the status, our progress report, but collaborating. You know, here, here's something I'm working on. What did you experience when you had that situation going on? Do you, are you experiencing the same challenge? I think that the collaboration is gone. I think that the drive to just get results is so strong that the, I, it's sad to say, but I think that companies want to care about the people. And I don't think that they're showing that they care about people so much because it's so much about results. So I think that the leaders have a lot more stress than they used to have because, you know, it's, it's a fast moving world. Mm -hmm. We really don't have time to mull over things like, like they used to, you know, and, and go <laughs> the days of going to long two hour lunches, those are kind of gone out the window. And, and sadly too many people sit, and this was me too. I, I was so guilty of it. sit at the desk and eat lunch because there was just so much to keep up with. So, I think if we if we can go back to building work on building relationships, then the work can be productive. We can be so much more productive with the work, right? So, you know, I like to work with teams on leadership. And also <laughs> another thing for me is let's try and help people grow. Let's not be so quick to course correct and put together performance a corrective action plans. How about we give people tools? And this is where the training and development comes in, which mm -hmm. is what I love. But how about if we give them tools? Like if they're not doing a good job coaching their teams, then how about we give them some training on how, how to be a better coach? If mm -hmm. they're not communicating effectively to their team, why don't we work with them on some communication opportunities? So identifying opportunities to help people grow rather than being so quick to course correct and put on a performance plan and move them out the door. Because by the way, it's bad for morale. And it's expensive for the company. It's really expensive for the company to have to continue to replace those people that leave. Yeah. Does that and answer your question? Yeah, no, it does. And it's interesting you say that because um, we, um, we we follow the we follow the Friedman Friedman Malik um, management philosophy and guide. And one of the things, and it was quite when we first you know came to this, one of the things that is very interesting about it is he advocates is focus on people's strengths and find where they can be successful using their strengths rather than focus on trying to fix weaknesses. And to your point, I, I, I love the point you raised that because we get so fixated on, on, you know, you do five things great, but the sixth thing you don't really oh. do very well. So let's right. focus all our energies on, let's talk about right. that in the, in the performance appraisal and let's put a plan together to fix that instead of, 
well, let's maybe maybe we don't need you to do that. Maybe we need to put a plan together to help you do more of what you're really good at. Absolutely. That would be such a great work environment, you know, because people would feel good. I mean, I think that really people still, people really do want to perform at their best yeah. level. I really, I really think that about people. They want to perform, you know. And so if the senior leaders of the organizations could recognize that and, and yeah, help people build on their strengths. I, I mean, everybody's good at some things and everybody has areas they can improve on. And so the best use of a team is identifying the differences so that the collaboration can really take place. Yeah, exactly. And then, I mean, and you can see that in sports all the time. The essence of a team is you don't have, um, whatever sport it is, you don't have a team of people with the exact same skill set. You have oh. a team of people whose skill set matches the position they play. Exactly. And you know, it's funny because I love sports and I actually, I tie sports in a lot of conversations. <laughs> you know, it's interesting that everybody has a different role mm -hmm. and all the roles are going to make you win and help you win or not. Exactly. And the goal is always to win. The goal is definitely to not tie the game. <laughs> the goal is to win. <laughs> exactly. Well, listen, Michelle, this has been fascinating. We're bumping up against the end of our time here. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Before we go, do you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more about you, get in contact with you? Absolutely. I thank you so much for inviting me to join you too. And I'm looking yeah, forward great. to hearing about the next step from, from this. I'm excited yeah. about that. But yeah, my, my company is called The Chant Group. And as you can probably tell, I took that from my name. So yeah. I, my goal is to unleash the champ within, right? So that's my goal. My website is www.beasaleschamp.net. And I've got lots of things going on and would love for people to go to my website and, and look forward to helping people unleash their inner champ through sales and through leadership. Yeah, fantastic. So, Michelle, again, thank you. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline, and CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you, John. Thank you. Let me just switch off the recording now.